Get ready for Friday Night Football on WECT with Zach Solon. Sponsored by Corning Credit Union Mortgage and Hardee's. From here on out, it's win or go home. This is when you leave everything out there week after week if you want to hoist that championship trophy. The first round of the playoffs feels like the first day of a new season. Let's find out who's moving on, starting with a big game in Wilmington. Up at Laney with the Buccaneers hyped to face Middle Creek as they intend to keep their season going. Championship belt and all, you've got to earn that one, fellas. Could you keep it going tonight? Offense starts with the ball. Bucks have a good first drive, methodically moving the ball downfield. That's Colby Little connecting with Aiden Rodgers. And right here, the quarterback going to keep it himself for a short game. This kid having a fantastic season, but it could all come to an end with one more loss. Right now, a handoff to Tizier, crewed up for a first down. They chew up nearly six minutes off the clock, knocking on the end zone door until the Bucks managed to cough it up on that pitch in the backfield. Mistakes like that can come back to haunt you, but the Bucks managed to get out of the jam and go to work on offense. That's Hampton Roderick with a great catch and run for big yardage. The band trying to hype it up and the Bucks trying to keep it simple on offense. This time another handoff to Crudup up the middle to help move the sticks. Then finally the Bucks break through the end zone. Who else but Tajir saying thank you very much for the score. Once again, the Bucks defense holding true as well and they force Middle Creek to punt. However, take a look at this play. The Bucks receiving squad gets a little disoriented and the ball clips a player. That's another easy turnover. Really mistakes and penalties hurting the Bucks in the first half against a feisty Mustangs team. The Bucks defense playing well. Offense waking up in the fourth and they go on to win the final score. Laney squeaks out a 27 to 13 victory. They had a pick six at the end of the game to ice this one. So the Buccaneers survive in advance. They will play Apex Friendship next week. As for Middle Creek, their season comes to an end. Now over to Leland and the 3A bracket with North Brunswick hosting the Person Rockets. And the Scorps are ready to sting in this first round matchup after a seven win regular season. Home team's first drive and a handoff to Calvin Webb and the junior gets some chunk yardage here before he's taken down. That's going to set up quarterback TT Green with an open lane and he walks in for an easy opening touchdown. Seven nothing North Brunswick. But next possession and the Rockets start to lift off. It's going to be a handoff here to Amari Moore and look at this big kid run. He goes sideline and it takes everyone to pull him out of bounds. A few plays later, and hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's more again asking for more, and he gets it. A touchdown there plus a two-point conversion makes it 8-7 person. Still first quarter with the Scorps back on offense. Green looking to pass. He hits junior Chris Webb across the lane, and he finds an alley. Webb turns on the Jets, and he's off to the races. He is finally taken down inside the five, but North would punch it in with Jabril Dash and retake the lead. Second quarter now, and all the running backs getting it done for North. Another nice run sets up with the Philadelphia Eagles call the brotherly shove. Scorpions push their quarterback in for another touchdown. 21-8 now. How about the defense? Rockets trying to pass, but Rayfield Lloyd picks it off. These teams would go back and forth, but North comes away with a one-point victory. 28-27. Nailbiter in Leland tonight, but for North Brunswick, you survive and... Because of seeding, J.H. Rose defeated White Oak tonight. So North Brunswick gets another home game next Friday. Going to be a big playoff atmosphere at, Bra at Bishop Stadium there in Leland. Now to the 2A bracket into Whiteville. Wolfpack starting their playoff run at home against South Granville. Luke Odom keeping it himself here. And look at him. He's trying to find all the way around. Runs about 25 yards on this play. Credited for 18 until he's popped out at the one. But that's going to set up the big man, Jamal Falk for the short touchdown. Packs confidence? Well, I guess you could say on this Friday night, it is uh, sky high. Now South Granville's Cameron Dennison taking the snap here, but he can't handle it, but Isaiah Baldwin can. He scoops it up and almost scores. He's brought down at the six, but if you know this Whiteville team, you know they love to run. That's Nalligan Powell taking it from right there. That's a two yard touchdown to put the pack up 14, just four minutes into this one. After a few scoreless possessions, the pack go back. And they're back at it here just before the half. Odom finding Will Fisher hanging out in the end zone. He reels it in for a 21-0 Whiteville lead at half. And your final score, the pack shuts out South Granville 42 to nothing. This is in a really tough two-way bracket. You've got teams like Wallace Rose Hill, Clinton, and East Duplin in this bracket. And that's who the Wolfpack will host next week. Should be a big-time matchup. We'll be there for the coverage at Legion Stadium. 
Now we're going to head to the 1A bracket and over to Elizabethtown with the East Bladen Eagles hosting North Edgecombe. Eagles flying high up 51 to 6 coming out of halftime. Two words you want to hear when you're running clock. Speaking of running, Jaden Daly keeps on doing just that. He refuses to go down here. 15 yard run to the 25 sets up a daily double. Another nice run here, breaking ankles and on his way to a touchdown and East Bladen's 57th points of the night. That's one reason to dance. He's loving it and so are the cheerleaders. Now, 57 points. If you want to win, you got to hope your defense is stepping up, right? And they're not giving anything. Right here, Deshaun Campbell and Caden McCoy bring down Caden Savage for a loss. And then Savage gets picked up and brought down on this next play by Jamison Brown and Matthew Kemp for another loss. He's going nowhere except back home and waiting for next season because East Bladen is moving on. The final score here, 57 to 14. The Eagles defeat the Warriors. That's the 1A bracket. Fewer teams there, but still playing a 32 team structure. So East Bladen will be on the road to take on Northside Pine Town next week. Now back to the 4A bracket and up to Fayetteville. Ashley taking on Pine Forest. Eagles back in the playoffs for the first time since 2007. He, Ashley gets the scoring started with a nice touchdown run here. The kind of momentum you need if you want to get a win on the road. Pine Forest would strike back with the Eagles counter from 34 yards out. Tyler Carter looking for a man downfield and he hits Quinn Bentley for the touchdown. That kid can do it all as he puts Ashley up by a score. And I mean that here he is rushing in for another touchdown in the second quarter. Screamings with all the momentum and they keep on going. How about another pass play? This time Carter finding the artist Dominic Michelangelo in the back of the end zone and Ashley goes to Fayetteville and pulls off the road upset against Pine Forest 35 to 19 the final Ashley wins a playoff game for the first time in more than a decade and just the second time in school history you get a 24 seed you don't expect to play many home games but the Screaming Eagles will get to do that next week against Fuquay Verena with great triumph for one team comes crushing defeat for another. That's just a small dose of the emotions we saw tonight. We've got more highlights in our top plays of the week coming up right after this.